Before I get into the particulars of how I tan hides, just a quick warning that this is a video about tanning and processing animal skins, so if you don't want to see that, you might want to skip this one. One of the most satisfying hobbies I've gotten into over the past couple of years is tanning leather. We knew when Jordan started hunting that we wanted to use as much of the animal as we possibly could, which is one of the reasons we take them home and process them ourselves. That way we can keep almost everything and try to find a use for it, like making bone meal fertilizer from the leftover bones, soap and cooking oil from the fat, and all kinds of cool things from the hides. Initially, we used a hide tanning oil that we bought online, and we had good results from that, but it wasn't the leather that I was looking for. You know, the kind that's thick and strong and has that wonderful woodsy aroma. To achieve this kind of leather, I needed to delve into a much more ancient art, the art of bark tanning, also called vegetable tanning. In bark tanning, you use the tannins naturally present in the bark of many trees and also other plants to transform animal skins into something entirely different. In fact, the word tannin, tannic acid, and even the color tan comes from this method of processing animal skins from the Latin tannum, meaning oak bark. These acidic compounds bind with the proteins in the hides, stabilizing them and making them resistant to decay, but keeping them strong and flexible. The first step in getting your skin ready to tan is to remove as much of the flesh and fat from the skin as possible. I do this on a makeshift fleshing beam, which is just a log stuck to some 2x4s and a dull blade. It needs to be dull enough that you can scrape it along your hide with enough force to get the flesh off while not actually cutting through the hide. Before I purchased a fleshing knife online, I used a dull hatchet and that worked perfectly fine, it just wasn't very ergonomic. Sense. 
After getting the flesh side of the hide relatively clean, I put it in a solution made out of water and hydrated lime. This will make the hide swell up and the hair slip out of the skin easily. It will also help knock back any bacterial action that could be taking place within the hide and dissolve some of those fats between the layers of skin and make it easier for the tannins to penetrate later. After a few days, the hair will slip out very easily and I put it back on the fleshing bean to remove the rest of it. I take all the fur from the hide and put it in the compost where it will break down very quickly and provide nutrients for our garden this year. At this point, the deer skin is ready to meet the tannins so that their beautiful synthesis can begin. Tannins are water soluble, so it's easy to extract them by just adding tannin rich materials to hot water. Traditionally, that would be something like oak bark, but it isn't that easy for us to get enough of that here in the suburbs. Luckily, we had something else that was very tannin rich that we'd already collected for our living off the land challenge this year, acorns. We collected many, many gallons of these in the fall, and every time we shelled them, we held on to those shells. When we leached the acorns of their tannins to cook with and make things like acorn granola or acorn cakes, we also reserved the first couple batches of that water, which were especially tannin rich. I also added in some oak bark from logs we had collected for firewood last year for good measure.
After cooking this tannin tea down for a bit to concentrate the tannin levels, I measured it with a barcometer, which is a tool you can use to see the tannin levels. I was happy to see that our completely locally foraged tannin tea was actually at the perfect level for tanning our deer hide. Obviously, being able to test your tannin strength with something like a barkometer is a relatively new invention in the long history of tanning leather, so it's not essential, it's just kind of cool. You can also do a taste test, it should be extremely astringent and bitter, and then you know it's probably strong enough to tan the hide. I first put the hide in a weaker solution and then moved it to a Rubbermaid with a more concentrated tannin tea after about 24 hours, which isn't needed, but it can give your finished hide a smoother texture. I slosh the hide around daily so that I know the tannin solution is reaching every nook and cranny, and after a few days to a week, I start taking cuts to test if the tannin has penetrated all the way through the hide. It will, be. it will be. And just go ahead and get it going. Okay, now I'm just gonna sit in here and we'll start to take on color pretty quick. Yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, it's all already. Yep. I mean you can see how strong and dark. Yeah, careful, you're gonna tan yourself. <laughs> Your hands are the leather. Yes, it's a leather very, face. Very weird thing to do. Yeah, well, better their own skin than somebody else's. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then do it, so I'm just gonna leave it for a minute. Good. Yeah. Splashed me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so does it just dry out in the sun a little bit, or? Yeah, and then I'll condition it with like some oil. Okay. Cool. After removing the hide from the tannin solution, I rinsed it off and let it drain for a few hours before scraping off any last bits of bark and membrane on the flesh side. Then I applied a mixture of egg yolks and olive oil to get some fats back into the skin. When it's almost completely dry, I condition it further with oil and beeswax. Treating the leather like this gives it that beautiful shiny finish and makes it resistant to drying out and cracking. I'll repeat this conditioning process over the years to keep my leather strong and water resistant. At this point, it will look, feel, and smell totally different from a raw deer hide. Thank you. 
I'm definitely still at the beginning stages of my leather tanning journey and I have a lot to learn, but it's been one of the most rewarding crafts I've taken on. I'm very inspired to continue to make use of all of the beautiful animal hides that so often get wasted and encourage you to try it if you feel so inclined. So so what is the process of making me, what is this, a quiver? Yeah. For arrows? So it gets, I mean, it's gonna be a tube, obviously. It's yeah. not done yet, but it'll be a... Very cool because this was a hide I did that was turned very out thick. very thick and dense, so yeah. I think it will be good for that. Use this to get you some more crispies. <laughs> exactly. These are my gift that keeps on giving. Christmas present, the original uh, deer hide groundhog fur mittens. <laughs> so warm, so comfortable, so cool. Yeah, and that, that's what I hold all my leather working tools in. Yeah. Awesome. If you got to this point in this video, that means you probably liked this video. And if you like this video, then you will love our gardening and foraging courses. How about that transition? That's right, Jordan. They include the 15 vegetable crops and 43 wild plants and mushrooms that we think are most important for living off the land. And they're on sale now. We're having our spring sale. The bundle of both the gardening and foraging courses is 50% off for the spring sale. And as usual, if you're on SnapWIC or similar financial assistance programs, please send us an email about our sliding scale pricing options. See you next week.